Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to the very last review of 2019. So today's Loco has been around for many, many years, but for some reason I've never been able to try one. However, just recently Hornby have reintroduced this model back into their range and I couldn't resist but give it a try. So here it is, it is this, the LNYR Lancashire and Yorkshire 040 Pug. Now this is a really, really interesting model. It dates back all the way to the 1980s. It was announced I think 34 years ago by Dapple and then Hornby later on acquired it. Now, that obviously raises a few questions. First of all, is it reasonable for Hornby to include this in their railways range? As you can see by the packaging here, this is not a railroad loco. So yeah, given its age, is it reasonable for Hornby to have this in their main range? Well, as I say, I've never had one of these before, so I don't know for sure. I can't rightly say. However, we will together find that out today when I get this out and review it. One thing that is for sure though is that Hornby haven't really overcharged for this. The ROP is £69.99 I think it was or 90 something and I bought this from Hattons for £63 so actually it's not an expensive model by any means. And if you too would like to pick one up I've included links down in the description for you and uh, while stocks last you should be able to pick those up. For now though I'm really really interested to see what this is like. They're very popular, they've got quite a reputation. I want to find out for myself so let's get this out and let's find out together. So even though this originated from the LNYR, the Lancashire and Yorkshire, as you can see from the outside of the box, mine is in the LMS black, which is very nice. Uh, the two options available from Hornby at the moment are the LMS black like this, and I think there's also a BR black one. So yeah, that's what you need to know. If I show you briefly the end of the box, you can see the product code here, which is R3727. It's an LMS Pug locomotive, and the running number there is 11244. One thing you'll notice that is missing from that label is the DCC ready symbol. And indeed, that seems to be the case. There is no DCC socket inside here, which means that you cannot chip this without a bit of work. So you would have to do some soldering if you wanted to fit that with DCC which is a little bit worrying, I suppose, for a railways range locomotive. It's not all that clear also when you purchase this thing that it's not DCC applicable. Uh, whether that's just because of the age of the thing or whether it's you know a space constraint because this thing is supposed to be pretty tiny, I'm not sure. So yeah, that's not great, is it? I would have said all main range locomotives should be DCC ready at the very least. Um, so yeah, I don't know. But we'll see what the rest of the model's like. Uh, let me show you the back of the box then. As you can see in real life, these were classified as a 0F, so not very powerful at all. And as you can also see, there's a brief history of the class right there as well. So feel free to pause and read that if you would like to. For now though, as I say, I've not had this out of the box yet, so I'm really interested to see what this is like. I'm curious to find out what this is like. The box is pretty light, I must say, but then again, I think these are tiny. I've not seen it yet, so let's actually take it out and find out how tiny this is. Oh wow, very tiny. Yeah, it's, we're talking sort of pecket tiny here. I, I imagined it would be somewhere in between the size of the Pocket Rocket 040 Pugs and the Peckets. It's definitely closer to the size of the Peckets, that's for sure. Right, well, let's get this out then, if I can. It's got the sort of blister pack, as you can see here, which is pretty good. And we seem to have instructions inside the box, so I will pull this out for you. So these instructions are for the Class 21 Pug. Let me just open this up and we'll have a quick look. It might show us a bit about the mechanism. Okay, so yep, as you can see, a bit about body removal there. And sure enough, you can see there is no DCC socket there. You can also see that this uses the Type 7 motor, which is a three-pole motor. So it is a bit of a shame that this doesn't have a five-pole motor. Already, even though I've not opened the packaging, it seems there are quite a few dated features on this Loco. And there's also a little bit about lubrication as well. So yeah, it's quite interesting and useful stuff there. Um, yeah, I'm really not sure what to expect. It's a Railways Loco, so there ought to be some detail there, but then again, it was pretty cheap. Paying £63 for any Loco is pretty reasonable, particularly one that is uh, new or only just come into stock. Yeah, it's certainly not new. 1985, I think, is when these came out, so yeah, it's not right to call it new but uh, it's new to me, that's for sure. Right, well, we do seem to have a detail bag, which is definitely unlike railroad locos, so that's one thing. Right, well, it appears to have some lamps inside there, some head code discs, I'm guessing, possibly, maybe they're not. And we've also got a member of the crew there, um, a guy who's pointing rudely. <laughs> 
not sure at what. Uh, but that is a really nice feature. That is definitely a railways range feature. Uh, in fact, I wish we got uh, crew included more often. That is a really, really nice touch. I enjoy that. Um, whether or not there's space inside the cab or how easy it will be to fit him inside the cab, I'm not too sure. But uh, yeah, I suppose we'll find out. Right, let's open up the packaging then. And for the very first time, for me at least, let's see what this is like. Oh, wow. Okay. So yeah, it is very light. It does feel as though this is mostly plastic and that was certainly the norm back in the 1980s when this was introduced. But yeah, it's a relatively cute looking thing, isn't it? I like the LMS decoration. The level of detail does seem to be relatively basic, I must say. But besides that, it's a relatively impressive looking thing, isn't it? I suppose, if nothing else, but for the size. So I will take a closer look at this in just a second. But first of all, here is a little bit of history on the LMS slash LMYR pugs. So these pugs were first introduced way back in 1886 and they were also known as the LMYR Class 21, as we've seen on the packaging. They were mainly intended for shunting work, and the class can be traced right back to the purchase of just three saddle tank engines ordered from the Vulcan foundry in 1886. Following the success of these, John Aspinall placed an order for more to be built to a slightly modified design. Over the next 25 years or so, a total of 60 engines would be built in total. When they passed into the LMS ownership following the grouping of 1923, they were given the power classification of 0F. Despite not being very powerful, they were perfect for tight radius curves and other nimble shunting duties. Withdrawal took place over several years. The first ones were retired way back in 1910, though as many as 23 survived as late as 1957. In total, only two have been preserved, while the remainder were sadly scrapped. Okay, so there it is, the Hornby LMS Pug up close and personal for you. And to be honest with you, I'm not 100% sure what stance to take with this, because obviously it looks relatively decent, and if Hornby had put this into the railroad range, as I've suggested they ought to have done, in, in order to be completely honest about it, I might have been saying, actually, for the railroad range, the level of detail on this is pretty impressive. However, at the same time, on the other hand, it's also definitely not up to modern standards, especially in light of some of the much more impressive 040s that we've seen over recent years, including the Hornby Peckets and the Hatton's Barclay 040s. But then again, this was about £30 cheaper than the Hornby Peckett. So I don't think value for money is really a problem here, or well, at least not at the moment. We haven't seen the thing run yet, but at the moment the value for money seems at the very least to be realistic. It's just to the layman who doesn't necessarily know the history of these models and who doesn't know that these are, you know, 35 years old nearly. They might buy one of these expecting the same level of detail as the Peckets and then be a little bit disappointed. So let me tell you a little bit about what I mean. So unlike the Peckets, the construction of this thing is very much mainly plastic, uh, particularly the boiler. In fact, all of the bodywork, as far as I can tell, is plastic. And that does have an effect not only on the weight, but on the sturdiness as well. I mean, I pick this up with the cab, and as you can see, the cab is extremely loose. Uh, it seems to shift around when you touch it. Now, it's almost like it's not clipped in properly. Hang on. Well, there we go. It clicks there, and now it's gone back into place. But you see what I mean? It's just It doesn't have the sturdiness that modern O4Os have. And as a result of all the plastic construction, of course, as I say, it is an awful lot lighter. So this weighs in at 80 grams, whereas the Peckett 040, which is smaller, by the way, weighed in at 130 grams. So this is going on nearly half the weight of that. Uh, so, yeah, it's an awful lot lighter. The decoration isn't too bad. As you can see, we have the LMS lettering on the side. And once again, Hornby have used that paint with the gold flecks in it to give it that slightly metallic finish but it seems to be a better quality one than they've used on the likes of Maud and the, was it the Lord Nelson class? Because as you can see, the tiny little builder's plate on this particular model is definitely readable, uh, as is the running number, of course, on the side of the cab, which looks pretty decent. Now, the level of detail is what needs to be addressed now. So there are quite a few what I would call dated features on top of what I've already discussed. So yes, it's got the three-pole motor and it doesn't have the facility for DCC. It also doesn't have cab detail of any kind. In fact, if you look inside the cab, you can just see the motor, <laughs> which is definitely a dated feature. Of course, these days, motors are small enough and mechanisms compact enough so that they would fit inside the boiler. And again, that's what's happened with the likes of the Peckett. 
Here we are in 2019 though, and this loco still has the motor inside the cab, which is definitely not a very realistic feature. Also, a lot of the separately fitted details are just plastic. In fact, they might not even be separately fitted. So the whistle here, for example, is just done in black plastic, which isn't dreadfully convincing, which is fine. You know, I think for the money, it's fine, but perhaps once again, not befitting of a Hornby Railways locomotive. We do at least have some glazed windows fitted on this model, though, four of them. So it's not all bad. We do at least have one or two modern details. As you can see by the smoke box, there's a fair bit of realism going on there. I think it actually looks pretty good. But on closer inspection, you can see that the smoke box dart there is just a part of the molding. And the application of the running number on the smoke box door there isn't 100% fantastic. It almost looks a little bit sticker-like, doesn't it? But besides that, it is a very tiny area compared with the size of my finger. So it's not too bad to say it's 34 years old. But once again, I do think the Peckets have beaten it. One thing that is quite interesting is the buffer beam. As you can see, the buffers, even if we can call them buffers, are quite unusual. So in those days, uh, at least on the Lancashire and Yorkshire, they must have used just these blocks to absorb any impacts and rather than having actual sprung buffers. Uh, whether What they would be made of, I don't know. Maybe they'd just be made of wood and they'd crash together. Um, but obviously they're not sprung or anything just due to the nature of them. We do have the separately fitted metal handrail, as you can see, which looks okay. It's reasonably fine. There's quite a bit of detail underneath the tanks as you can see which I think looks pretty decent uh, that is relatively impressive actually for the age as you can see the coupling and connecting rods look reasonably nice and fine pretty realistic those but as you can see there has been no attempt to cover the ends of the axles or blacken them or whatever and again I would consider that to be a relatively dated feature so you can see what I'm saying, hopefully. The level of detail isn't terrible, but it's also definitely not that great and certainly not really up to modern standards. The build quality isn't terrible. As I say, the cab was a little bit loose and the base plate that holds the wheels in is a little bit loose as well. I've noticed, well, you can see there's a bit of a gap going on there and I keep having to push that on. But besides that, yeah, it's not dreadful. I think for the money, it's definitely reasonable. You don't want to go out and buy this if you're not interested in LMYR pugs or LMS pugs or whatever. It's not a model that you've got to own no matter what just because it's so fantastic. But I think if this is suitable for what you model, it's probably worth having. However, we haven't got onto performance yet. I've not actually seen this run. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll revisit that statement in just a second. So let's get it down onto the track then and find out how it does in fact run. Okay, so there she is, the LMS Pug down onto the track ready for her first test. First of all, a little bit about the mechanism, and I do think the mechanism is the worst aspect of the model so far. So we've already talked about the motor, which is a three-pole one. That is what it is. We have seen some locos run pretty well on a three-pole motor, so maybe this one will be the same. One thing I've not mentioned yet is the couplings. As you can see, they're these quite wide couplings, which I know a lot of people don't like. The issue here is that those are not NEM couplings, so you cannot easily replace them as you can with other modern locos. Finally, I took a look under the hood to find out what we were dealing with on the mechanism front. The first thing I discovered was that the screws that hold the wheel retaining plate were not driven in correctly, which explains why the base was so loose. So perhaps a bit of a quality issue there in the way these were assembled. When I did get the base off, I found what looks like a plastic chassis. A bit of a shame that because a metal chassis would have brought some much needed weight and also a little bit more sturdiness uh, to the actual chassis. There's also no proper bearings on the wheel set, as you can see there, which is not a great quality feature. Obviously, wear and tear isn't a major concern because if it is indeed a plastic chassis, as it seems to be, pretty sure it is, then it's not going to be wearing the axles away. But as I say, I personally would have much preferred a heavy metal chassis as opposed to a plastic one with a proper set of bearings in it. However, we haven't actually tried this yet, so despite the poor mechanism, who knows, it may be a good runner. Well, let's find out, shall we? So this is the first run. Bear in mind, it has not been running yet. I am going to do that before I make a final judgment. But here is the first run, as it is, as it comes straight out of the box. So here we are, turning it up slowly. Let's see how this gets on. Ooh. There we go. The odds were against it, but it's doing a great crawl has one pickup per wheel, if you're interested. Uh, it's cut out. I suppose that was inevitable. Right, let's give it a nudge backwards. Right, so this clearly seems to have been geared to have quite considerable torque. So despite only having a three-pole motor, it is able to do those slow speeds. Um, 
Yes, although it's not dreadfully reliable, it does seem to keep cutting out. There we are, as you see I had to give it a nudge. Uh, but maybe that will improve as it runs in, that is certainly possible. But yeah, the slow speed appears to be really good. If unreliable, it stopped again, come on. And this is not on a point, by the way. Oh, come on. See if it stops at that speed. Yes, <laughs> and that's not on the point. So yeah, the slow speed itself is excellent, but it doesn't really get a chance to show it off because continuity with the rails seems to be an issue. However, let me give it a nudge and speed it up to about 50% speed, and we'll see how it goes once it's been run in. So the slow speed definitely seems to be pretty good, but it certainly isn't giving the reliable silent running that we've come to expect from the likes of the Peckets and the Hattons Barclays. Um, yeah, quite a noisy one this actually, particularly at the slightly higher speed that we're running her at now. So yeah, not all that impressive, but it is functional. It hasn't derailed, for example, um, hasn't burnt out. I mean, it, it could be worse, I think, but it also could be quite a lot better. So I will allow this some time to run in and I'll come back having tested the pulling power. <laughs> Don't hold your breath on that. And we'll see how it gets on with the load. All right, talk to you in a second. Okay, there we go. She has now been run in. And I must say, yeah, reliability seems to be okay. Uh, anything other than a really slow crawl, she can at least make it around the layout without any problems. The issues really come at the very slow speeds, which are very good actually. Let me just show you now that she's run in. It is a little bit more reliable than it was when it was straight new out of the box, but it does still have a tendency to cut out, I've found. I'll leave it to crawl along. But I mean, yeah, that slow speed is amazing. The one thing that you will have trouble with is express points because it is a physical impossibility that this loco will not stop on those express points at a slow speed because the distance between the two wheels is actually shorter than the length of the insulated plastic frog of the point, which means that it's always going to cut out. And I think the loco has now cut out, hasn't it? Has it? Yes, it has done. So as you can see, yeah, reliability at the very slowest speeds is a problem uh, and express points is a problem as well. But besides that, yeah, it seems to run very nicely. The one thing that is very noticeable though is the pulling power. It is an extremely weak loco. So I measured this at 0.06 newtons, which is the weakest I have ever measured. The next weakest loco is twice as powerful as this, and it is the Hornby Coca-Cola train set loco, which had 0.12 newtons of pulling force, and it's way less than half of the pulling power of the Hornby Peckett, even though it's a little bit larger than the Peckett's. So do not expect this thing to do much pulling on your layout. However, I thought I would be quite ambitious and I will test the pulling power, probably to its limits really. So as you can see, I've set up some vans. There are nine, I believe there, including the LMS brake at the back. There's also some sneaky Great Western vans on there as well, but I wanted to make up the numbers to about 10. Well, I managed nine, so we're doing okay. Now, I do not have a loco that cannot manage those. Have I got one now? We will find out. Well, let's see. Let's send it into reverse and get it coupled. It's cut out again. Oh, come on. Bit frustrating, that. Go on. Oh, dear. Come on. Have I derailed it? No. Try again. Oh, no, no, we're okay. Oof, we're okay. Right. I must say the slow speed has to be one of the best aspects of the model, doesn't it? I mean, that is not too bad. I wish it was a little bit more reliable, but um, yeah, it's not terrible. I mean, at anything, I mean, at that speed, it seems to be actually pretty reliable. And it is managing the vans, which is not too bad. I expect it's going to grind to a halt when it reaches the express point. Yes. <laughs> so momentum is its friend when it comes to express points. Let's give it a little nudge. So don't get me wrong, it will do express points, you just need to take them at a bit faster speed, otherwise it will just stop. So then it cut out, but it managed to have the momentum to carry itself over. So I have got some other 040s running for you on the line today. On the middle line we have Smokey Joe, who is also a pug in fact, but a Caledonian one, not one from the LMYR. And she has got some, what are they, I think they're livestock wagons of some description, I'm sure you guys know better than me. 
And then on the inside line, we have one of my first ever Locos. In fact, it might have been my first ever. It is also a Caledonian Pug, but uh, a Caledonian blue one, which is lovely. And with that, we will see how the new Pug is getting on. Also, see which other 040s you can spot on the layout and see if you can spot an odd one out. So even for a Loco of its size, this is clearly a very, very weak puller. But can it manage about 10 wagons? Well, let's see. I'm hoping it will do. I would say if it can do this, then at least we can say it can pull a prototypical load or a halfway prototypical load. I'm sure it would manage much more in real life. But as you can see, yep, up Gordon's Hill it goes. There is a bit of wheel slip going on. We'll look at it again on the next lap. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it's struggling. But to be fair to it, it has managed to do that, which is pretty good. So that's not bad. Here comes Smokey Joe. Good old Smokey Joe. I ought to run this one more often because people love him. He was also a pretty decent runner, actually, for the price. Got to say, though, it's a nice looking engine, isn't it? It's very, very cute. It's got a lot of character to it, I must say. Hmm. Yeah, perhaps there wasn't any wheel slip there. Maybe a tiny bit, but definitely nothing significant. That wasn't bad at all. So here are some of my ratings for the Hornby LMS Pug, which I must say I do quite enjoy. However, the fact that I like it doesn't change the fact that this is, uh, you know, a 35 nearly year old model. And so the level of detail does reflect that. Most of the detail on this model is definitely not up to modern standards. There are one or two decent features such as the glazed windows and the detail underneath the tanks. But for the most part, I don't think Hornby are going to be convincing anybody that this is a modern locomotive. The performance is about similar really, now on the plus side it does have a fantastic slow speed, very very impressed with that. However it's not ultra reliable at the slow speeds, it does seem to cut out and that is still true really having already run it in. It is quite a noisy runner as well and it's also very very underpowered, as I say by far the weakest runner in my collection. The mechanism though is where this really falls down, it doesn't have any NEM pockets, it's got a cheap 3 pole motor, it doesn't have a metal chassis, it doesn't have any proper bearings, it really is a very very basic mechanism and of course there's no DCC socket either. Very 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 basic dated stuff here, not really appropriate for the Hornby Railways range. The quality is a little bit better, I've given this 3 out of 5, I think it would have been much better if there was some metal work on this, particularly with the chassis. And also the assembly wasn't fantastic, uh, bits of the cab weren't clipped on properly and the screws weren't driven in all the way, which did leave a little bit to be desired on the quality. However, nothing has actually dropped off it, it does seem relatively sturdy once you've made, well, once you've checked that it's all assembled properly. But you know, it is what it is, so quality 3 out of 5. The value though I thought was okay, I think for the price I paid from Hattons of £63, this is at least worth checking out if you like the looks of the engine. But besides that though, it is still quite a lot of money for what is a very tiny and very old and basic loco. Uh, so yeah, I've given it a four star. I do think it's a reasonable price. I'm really glad that Hornby didn't sell this for £100, which they easily could have done. I think a more ideal price would have been £50, let's say. That would have been much better. But besides that, yeah, it's okay. So overall then, that is 5.47 out of 10. Not fantastic, is it? Nothing dreadful though, nothing outright awful about it. But it's not amazing. Let's put it into the rankings then. 46th, just above the Hornby 156 and below the Railroad B17. Blimey, it looks like I need to revise my bottom five model trains of 2019. Darn it. Oh well, at least we've seen worse this year. So, yeah, obviously I wish this was better, that is true. Um, but personally, I would say I'm pretty happy with this, I just can't help but really enjoy it. As a reviewer, I've obviously had to criticise it because if I said it's the best thing I've ever owned and I love it, I think some of you might smell a rat. So yeah, there's no choice but to be completely honest and uh, point out that it is incredibly old and dated. There may be a reason to buy it if you, like me, just enjoy it. So yeah, it's up to you. Let me know in the poll. Would you buy this or would you avoid it? I'm not too sure. I can predict how that one's going to go, actually.
Uh oh, it looks like there's some extra weight causing problems. <laughs> you wouldn't believe that, would you? <laughs> Look, <laughs> can manage it without the giant cow, but not with. Sorry, Bullman, looks like you're not getting a ride today. So that is the end of my final review of 2019. It's been an incredibly busy year. I've done over 50 reviews this year and I've thoroughly enjoyed them. This is not the last video of the year. I will be doing one final video, a bit of a roundup of the year in a couple of days time. So do look out for that. But for now, let me know down in the comments what you thought about this. If you'd like to pick one up, there is a link in the description or if you just want to look at what other versions there are, there's a link down below for you. But for now, thank you for watching. Thank you for your company. Have a very happy new year and I will see you very soon. Cheers, everybody. Take care.